What is up, guys? We are live. How's it going? Zach in here. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering your wholesaling real estate questions. And really, I'm going to be answering the questions the gurus are going to refuse to ask and really answer. Uh, so I want to get some people on here. We are currently live. So this is really exciting. I'm going to go live for as long as you guys want me to. Honestly, I could do, I, I've done five, six hour lives before. I can do an hour. I can do as much as I can. I mean, it's Sunday, no football on today. So I'm here for you guys just to help you guys out in your real estate wholesaling business. So uh, let's get some people going in. Remember guys, if you have any questions about real estate wholesaling specifically, I'm here to help you out. I love to help people out. Let me know what market you're currently in, in real estate wholesaling. And I would love to actually see what I can do to help you guys out. Um, some really big things I, I can really say why I'm waiting for some people to hop on here is in real estate wholesaling, guys, remember, if you're a beginner, uh, this is more or less, I think, for beginners, uh, but you can ask as many advanced questions as you want. Uh, but if you're a beginner in real estate wholesaling, I know you're watching this on YouTube and it's very confusing for you. You know, th th there's just so much information being thrown at you on YouTube, maybe on Facebook groups and things like that. And you're just like, wow, what do I do? Uh, there's just so much information everywhere. What should I do? So my best opinion is stick to a couple YouTube channels. You can watch all of them, but take the bits and pieces from them all. Uh, so what I would do is not create your own little mini course, but add a bunch of videos to a playlist for yourself. So go to cash buyers and find all the cash buyer videos possible, and then watch them all. And then learn cash buyers doing that. Have a marketing one. Learn all about marketing. All about, watch every YouTuber when they talk about SMS. Watch everyone when they talk about cold calling, bandit signs, direct mail, whatever you're trying to get into. Watch all the podcasts you have for that. And so don't specifically be obsessed with one type of YouTuber. I would look at, I mean, obviously look at all my stuff. I mean, it's the best stuff out there. I'm a little biased, but... Look at every specific part of wholesaling and watch all the top guys and their opinions on that. And don't go specific off of one person. Uh, use many, many, many others and see which one you can do. So dispositions, I'd watch five YouTube channels just on dispositions videos and it'll help you guys out. So that's what I'd probably do. Remember, there's a lot of videos out there for YouTube. Make sure you're sticking to ones in 2021. Wholesaling is completely different than it was five, six years ago. You see these other YouTube videos from it. So I'd be very careful. So let's get some questions going on here. Lucan says, can we have advice for teens? Of course. Uh, before we get into it, guys, remember, you need to smash that like button and subscribe. And also comment below your questions. Helps the YouTube algorithm so I can get as many people on here. So I can help you make your first $100,000 in real estate wholesaling absolutely for free. That is all I want on this YouTube channel. So... Luke had a great question here. Can you, can we have advice for teens? I'd love to give you advice for teens. So I started real estate wholesaling when I was a teenager at 17 years old and I had about 300 bucks in my bank account. So I feel like I'm pretty well versed to talk about real estate wholesaling as a teenager. Obviously there's a difference between when you're over 18 years old versus when you're under it, but overall there's still really good for wholesaling. So there's no age difference when it comes to real estate wholesaling. You guys, you need to remember that what, how old you are in real estate has no bearing on your success. There's guys out there that are 16, 17 that are killing it. There's people out there 50, 60 that are absolutely destroying it. You can do this business in every single type. Like whatever age you are, you can do it. Uh, I'm telling you. So when you're a teen, you're really going to have to be focusing a lot more on actually building that skill set needed because you might not have a lot of time in your hands. You might be in high school, you might be in college. So you might have to be very efficient with your time, or you might have a lot of time on your hands. And really, in my opinion, the best time to get in real estate wholesaling is when you're a teen, because you don't have responsibilities. The world is not on your shoulders yet. You don't have a lot of bills to pay most likely. And if you're living with a parent's house, it's the perfect time to really learn that skill set and get going in that business so you can change your life. That's what happened to me. So I would say I would be focusing more on cold calling. When you're a teenager, I feel like that is still the best marketing strategy out there because when you're cold calling, you're actually finding motivated sellers, first of all. Second of all, you're actually building your skill set, talking to sellers all at the same time. 
and it's a free marketing source. That's why I'm the biggest fan of cold calling out there uh, because that's when I was 18 years old, that's how I actually built the biggest growth in my real estate wholesaling success was that one year where from Monday through Friday, all I would do was cold calling. Literally, that, that's all I did. So from 2 to 7 p.m., I was literally behind my dialer and I was just dialing and calling. And it, it was the biggest thing ever because I was just talking to sellers and getting so good at just talking to them over the phone. And it really translated very well when I actually met them in person or did my virtual wholesaling. So it was it was absolutely amazing. I, it just it absolutely changed my life uh, getting into cold calling. And if I did that like SMS, I think don't think it would have been too well. So if you're a teenager, stick to a lot of the free lists. You probably don't have a lot of money, but you have a lot of time. And that is huge. So I would be utilizing that time to get free wholesaling lists, free skip tracing. It's all there. I know a bunch of gurus say you can't have to pay for skip tracing. No, you get skip tracing absolutely for free. Uh, so what I would say is get a government list. A government list can be something like a code violation. It could be probates. It could be the water shutoff list. I show you all in this channel actually how to pull all that information, but Really, in my opinion, I think code violations are huge and probates. That would be what I'm focusing mostly as a teen. If you have a car, maybe some money for gas, I would be driving for dollars. That'd be probably my number one priority. And I would start cold calling that driving for dollars list, that code violation list, a bike for dollars, walk for dollars. I don't care. Get yourself out there and get leads. That's very important. Start calling. Probably shouldn't be buying it. Like if you don't have the money, you shouldn't be buying a dialer. You should just be using like a Google voice or something, do single line dialing until you get your first deal and you can invest in a dialer. That's my personal recommendation. So make sure we're, we're all good here with the audio and everything. But uh, that's what I'd be saying. Like right now in real estate wholesaling, I think cold calling is about to make a huge wave and a difference. Now, is it going to be like this forever? I don't know. Cold calling was huge in 2017 and it really sort of dive down because everyone was hot in the SMS. Now there's probably going to be a huge shift in what marketing is cool or hot with the influencers, but I don't think cold calling is ever going to die. And I think it's huge with the trace act. It's not going to really change much, especially if you're a teenager for real estate wholesaling. So I really wouldn't be affected too much on that one. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. I'd probably skip SMS for now as a teen. If you're looking to get an SMS, you're probably because you don't want to talk to sellers or you're nervous talking to them. The easiest way to get over that is just, honestly, is just overcoming that fear. That's kind of what I would say. Uh, but it, it's getting a little, it's getting a little crazy right now uh, in real estate wholesaling. But there's still teenagers out there absolutely destroying it. What they're doing is they're getting in front of sellers and just talking to them. When I got my first real estate wholesaling appointment and my first deal, I was 17 and I had cracked voice. I was a lot shorter. And I looked like a baby and I still got the wholesaling deal. Why? Because the number one thing, guys, when you're a teen is you got to focus on confidence. I think confidence is one of the most important skill sets for real estate wholesaling. And it's one of the most important things, I think, in general, if you want to have success in life, uh, having the confidence to do something and execute it and going through there, especially when it's tough or difficult, that is just, it's a great skill set for anything. But having that in real estate and real estate wholesaling will just be, one of the most important things you can honestly do. So I'd be focusing really, really deeply on building confidence, building that skill set. If you want to be building a skill set in your real estate wholesaling business, especially as a teen, I would say YouTube's probably the best place to go. Obviously, my wholesaling houses for real Facebook group is the best out there. But overall, uh, I would personally recommend that you watch and just become a sponge of information. Become a sponge of information for real estate wholesaling through YouTube. Watch every single video you can. Don't get new analysis paralysis, but overall, I think you do well. The biggest chance of you getting a deal is not how many YouTube videos you watch. It's how much confidence you have and the action you're going to take today to change your life for real estate wholesaling as a teen. Great question, Lucan. Ravelog team says, how do you wholesale a house if a seller asks to use their attorney? You could still wholesale if they have an attorney. That's one of the coolest things about wholesaling and real estate in general is depending on your state. So if you're in New York, it's a tad different, but overall you should be fine on this one. So the seller asks for the attorney. I just think, say, okay, fine. And 
honestly, if they ask, there's two things. So either the seller is asking you for an attorney to actually write up the contract or they're actually asking for the attorney to look over your contract. If they're saying they have an attorney to look over the contract, about 50% of the time they're actually bluffing and they want to see if you're scared or not, which it's kind of worrying you here. So it might be working a little. So most of the time when a seller would ask me if an attorney can look over the contract I have, I said, sure. And they never look at it. And they usually don't have the money to even pay for an attorney to do this. So it's it's fine. So like I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be too concerned over that. But uh, yeah, attorneys, I mean, they're going to find something wrong because they're trying to get money off of you. Like, remember that attorneys are trying to find a problem with your contract so they can justify why you're spending 300 bucks looking over a contract, which is insane. So uh, make sure you know the key difference. If they're asking the seller to actually write up the attorney to write up the contract, just make sure you can still assign it. But uh, yeah, it's still able to wholesale. Mr. Medina says, I've asked two gurus this. What are some things you can do to overcome the new wholesaling laws from Oklahoma and other states that you can't assign contracts? You have to buy the property first. Technically, yes, but you can do double closings and they'll protect you. So you got to find a title company that's okay with it. Possibly get transactional funding, which is very easy if you actually have a wholesaling deal. Like if you show a guy, a funding guy that, hey, I have a contract here that I can assign this. I have a contract. No. If you're doing a double closing for, okay, New Jersey would be different than Oklahoma here. So in Oklahoma, with the new law that they put in, you would not get an assignment of contract or a commitment from a buyer. In New Jersey, you you, you could technically still assign it, but you might have to show that as leverage. So in Oklahoma, I would say that you just get it under contract and you show a transactional funding guy that, hey, this buyer agrees right here. Call the buyer. He agrees to buy this for 140 and we're doing a double closing. That should work pretty well. Uh, but overall, if you get it for a deep enough discount, you can show a transactional funding guy, you get transactional funding. Final title company that does the double closing. It's just a couple more steps, but there's a lot less competition in Oklahoma if you're able to do that. So I think it's huge. So yeah, double closing would be what I do. They can't stop you from doing it. That's technically buying a property and selling it, but you're, you don't have any of the headaches of it and you're technically assigning it. So, uh, that's what I would say. Are there VA companies that have their own title company, Virginia companies or VA? Mm, I would do an individually owned title company. That's probably what I'd be doing. Hey bro, I got picked up by a company for acquisitions. What do you think would be a fair rate? They closing like 30 to 50 deals monthly. I still have my VA calling and sourcing links from my company. A fair rate. Honestly, if you're doing acquisitions, it'd be a percentage of the, yeah, it'd probably be a percentage of the wholesale deal. And yeah, that's probably what it'd be. Maybe five to 10%. Um, I don't know. You're, you're not the owner of the company. You're not actually putting up the marketing and things like that. So it's a little different, uh, but maybe five to 10, depending on how many deals you're doing and how much money you can make. How do you find the owners of LLC properties? You do a bunch of things. I know batch skip tracing actually has LLC owner you can do on there. So that's probably what I'd recommend. You can also look them up. So I know in Florida, you can actually look up the owners of all the corporations or LLCs. And that's very easy. It'll show like John Smith or the address there and the address will bring back to someone who lives at that street. So that's probably the best way to do an LLC. Trust you mostly just look at the mailing address and that's the best way to get a hold of them. Nine times out of 10, that mailing address, if it isn't like a corporate or UPS store or like a USPS one, that's probably what I'd say. Tyler says, can you remind us quick where to pull those free lists? What department at the courthouse, right? Correct. So the free list, I would say, so department, so code enforcement department where I'd get the code violations. The courthouse, I would get the probates. Water shutoffs would be at the utility department. Divorce list you can get from the courthouse. And then utility list still from the utility and the water shut off. Drawing for dollars, you actually have to actually drive and actually build that list. And the vacants, I'd still get a list That's probably my recommendation on there. Uh, but 
that's where I'd get most of the really important free lists. And my favorite free list is technically drawing for dollars if you're like walking for dollars, but uh, code violations are huge. I, I still such a big fan of them. What's up, Hassan? How are you? Zach's mentee. <laughs> Can you uh, analyze my deal? Sure, man. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you. Virtual assistant. Yeah. I don't think virtual assistants own title companies. So it's probably best if they're not operating from the Philippines for a title company because it'll be a lot more difficult for the seller to like go to the title company. So I would personally not recommend that at all. Zach, I have a favor, bro. Are you open to having a five minute conversation with, with my son? He's knowledgeable in the biz, uh, but 14 years old. His email is my name is bro. Honestly here, here's an invite button. I'm going to post in the comments. If you want to come on here and talk to me, right? Here's the link. It's in the comments. Click on that link. If your son wants to hop on, I'll talk to him. That's honestly how we do it. I click that link. I'll put you on. We can talk. That's how you, that's how you want to get a face to face with me. Click on that link. What it, the advice I give him, I want everyone to hear because I think it'll help everyone. If I give some advice face to face, I want it to be public for everyone because I'm not making money off you guys. So this isn't a private Zoom where you're paying me five grand. Like this this stuff is all for the people by the people because I want real estate wholesaling to actually be like public information. Like learning the stuff should be free. It's like learning how to become financially free. You shouldn't be paying money for that. Like it should be free. It should be public stuff. Um, I just feel like wholesaling, paying five grand for mentorship to learn this business, it's not the way it should be. It should be for the people, by the people. So hop on there, take on a video call. I'll go, man. Like I am love to talk to you guys. But yeah, REI family, hop on that thing. You're watching this on YouTube. The link's on there. If he actually wants to talk to me, go do it. They call the attorney and ask if, if they can assign contracts. If they can, then it's fine. Yes. So I offer five to 10 for land acquisitions or a deep discount of 10 to 20%. I think anything low, lower than 20% of market value is amazing for land, for wholesaling. So that's probably what I do. Five to 10 is pushing it. Honestly, in this market, I'd be closer to 20. I'd be closer to 20%. At 25, you got to have really good cash buyers for the land just to make sure you're not going to get out of the contract. But I think it's closer to 10 to 20 and probably even on the higher side. Life with Naya says, what is up? How do you tell the seller when, what do you tell the seller when you sign the contract and look for a cash buyer? Do you sign the contract with the seller before or after you find the cash buyer? So in our real estate wholesaling business, most of the time we already have the cash buyer in our list. But if you're starting out, you don't need to have the cash buyer. It's easier and it's leverage for you to actually find the cash buyer by actually having a deal. You can use it like a little carrot to dangle in front of them uh, to get them put on your list. So one really cool trick I do is with like white bandit signs, uh, especially when you're starting out. That's a huge one for me. I love bandit signs and they're not the best anymore for actually finding sellers but they're still amazing for cash buyers. So what I would do is first of all, get the contract signed with the seller, make sure everything's good on that one. And then, so what do you tell the seller when you, okay. Okay. I didn't see the first part of the question there. So yes, I tell the seller that, okay, great. So glad we got, I'm so glad we got, the, we got this contract signed and we're ready to go. What most likely is going to happen is either me or my partner or just me and my partner are going to walk through the property one or two times really before we actually get the closing, just so we can confirm the condition and really see if there's any work that needs to be done. Is that something you're okay with? Boom. If it's vacant, it's okay. We put a lockbox so we can go through it and see the kind of work that needs to be done on the property and your partner. Remember your cash buyer is your partner. You're not lying. Do not lie to your sellers. I you don't lie to them. It's not a good way to do business. But my cash buyers are my partner and I do partner on deals with them by actually selling them my deals. So specifically, we don't tell the cash buyer that. We don't tell the seller that. But overall, I just say, hey, me and my partner, we might go by. Might be him, might be me, might be both of us. And we're just going to look through the property. Is that something that's okay? Get the okay. Most of the time, this should never be a problem. 
And then what you want to do from there, you have the contract signed. If you got earnest money, make sure it goes to the title company, make sure the contracts at the title company. I do that because I'm in Florida, which is a sunny place for shady people. And there's so many wholesalers trying to like steal every single deal I do. So I got to make sure I have earnest money and paper trails. So my deals never get stolen. And sometimes an affidavit, if something goes crazy, uh, but usually it's with the other wholesaler trying to steal a deal or something. So overall, I'd be very careful. Make sure you at least put at least a hundred bucks earnest money just to protect you in that deal, if it's, especially if it's a really good deal. So that's probably number one I would do, especially so do you sign the contract with the seller before or after? So yes, sign up the seller before. You don't want the cash buyer to screw you over. And then what I want you to do is go to www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. Again, that is www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. From there, let me pop it up on the bottom for you guys here. This is important, guys. All right. So www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. That is my free wholesaling contract. That is the actual contract I use in my real estate wholesaling business and acquisitions. And it also comes with my assignment of contract, which honestly, I think in most like big gurus you do, you could use their contract and honestly, it's going to be decent and you probably can't really go too wrong with it. So it's not bad. Now, the assignment of contract is different. This is stuff that I think is the best out there, especially on YouTube. My assignment of contracts, the one that we've been using forever, it stops cash buyers from trying to steal your deal. And it makes sure that they have a non-refundable deposit. It's got all the language you need. That is obviously for free. Like I, I'm not this type of guy that'll sell my contract for like 30 bucks. It, it's embarrassing YouTubers doing that. But um, I would use that one. So www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. That is where I'd go. Put your email in there. I'll email you the contract. And then from there, you just get my assignment of contract. I'll protect you. It will stop a cash buyer from stealing your deal. If they sign that, it's almost impossible for them to steal your deal. Uh, and again, I'm not a CPA, financial advisor, lawyer, any of that stuff. But I'm telling you right now, it's the best assignment of contract out there for free. Uh, or in general, even if you pay for it. So that's my personal opinion. I'm sticking to it. Hey, Zach, I have a home under contract for 82000 with an ARV of 151 Three two seven five seven. Let me see what that is. Three two seven. Okay, that is in Mount Dora. Sweet. I sent it out to multiple cash bars, but no one responding. What am I doing wrong? Okay, Let's look this up. Um, okay. So if your ARV is $151,000, here's my biggest problem you have with me, JM. You're not telling me how much the actual repairs are on this property. I can't do my calculations on sell unless I actually get the repairs because you want ARV minus repairs. And then we can sort of make a more or less how much of a discount you got and how good of a deal you have. You, bro, you got to let me know the repair cost on it. And then I can get back to you and actually help you out. DeAndre says, should I get general liability insurance for my LLC in wholesaling? I say no. Use that money for your marketing. If you're wholesaling ethically and correctly, there shouldn't be a problem at all. Repairs are 25. So let's do the math really quick. So let's do the math together, guys. So $151,000 right here minus $25,000 in repair is 126 k I always say this. Most of the time when you guys are actually saying your numbers are wrong or whatever, your ARV is most likely inflated. That is most of the problems when it comes to these. So 126, let's say mm, you're in Mount Dora. Say cash buyers are going to buy at 80%. So that means cash buyer most likely pay 100K for that house if your ARV is correct, which means you, you should make 18,800. Let's say 18,000. Or let's just say, yeah, let's say 18,000. You're going to make $18,000 on this. So 
what's going wrong? Your ARV most likely is wrong, but the issue is cash buyers aren't even responding. A good cash buyer, if your price is way too high, first of all, Jim, you also got to let me know what cost you're, I mean, what is the, excuse me, I drank a lot of water first for this. What is the actual price you're actually trying to sell this one for? Because that's probably, if you're trying to sell this thing for like 120, you're way off. Like cash buyer max, I showed you basically at 100. So if you're trying to sell this at 120, you're probably getting ghosted because that's way too high. You also want to leave some discount for the actual ca like cash buyer so they'll use you more than once. So that's probably what I would say. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to do the math there. So if the cash buyer isn't responding to you, most likely it's because your price is too high, your ARV is too high, your marketing method of actually getting in touch with the cash buyer is probably not good. That's what I'm trying to think here. So, I mean, it, you got to get feedback from the cash buyer. Like I would call the cash buyer and say, hey, did you get that deal? What is there a reason why you're not wanting to buy it? I thought you wanted to buy properties at a discount. And they'll literally tell you the price is too high. Okay. Looks like your ARV was wrong. ARV was wrong. Now I do have cash buyers that sometimes will try to screw you. Uh, and they'll say, oh, I need to buy this thing for 50. And they're just being greedy because they know they're the only cash buyer. So having multiple qualified cash buyers is super duper important. JM says, I'm trying to sell for 84. Yeah. Your ARV is way too high. Most likely that's, that's probably what I'm thinking. Uh, let me know what feedback you're getting from cash buyers. But honestly, man, I appreciate JM. Most likely I would say here is I would call the cash buyer again and ask them why they're not trying to buy this property if it's at a discount. They'll usually tell you the price is too high or they'll actually give you some feedback on it at what price works for them. You might need to get a reduction, but it's all good, man. So 2361 Lane Decanter. All right, we'll look it up. All right. So let me try to share my screen here. Manassas. So I like to use uh, Redfin for free comps. I can do this on listrei.com, but not everyone has the money for that. Especially like you're starting out, you're like you're broke. So I get it. So let's go here. Share my screen. Let load up here, but I'm currently doing comps on this property. So we're going to see. All righty. So it looks like I see if this is working or not. Oops. All righty. So two, three, six, one Manassas Lane. So three, two, 1500 square feet. Mm, trying to think here. Okay. So it's outside Atlanta. Okay. So it's 7240. So we're going to see this. So 1500. We've got some interesting ones here. I'm trying to get just the information in general for this. Then we can see what we can do for here. So three, two, 1500 square feet. So it looks like there's a four, three here, 1500 square feet. Different build 235. So that possibly could be a comp. Looks like it's pretty close right here. It's decent. 189. Hmm. I'm trying to find 1500 comps. 235 seems a little high. So let's click that. 
And let's see if that property's like in good condition or not. And we're going to pop up this other address here. Alrighty. So four, two and a half. Yeah, it's an extra bedroom. It's probably not the best comp. So that's going for 149 a square foot. Let's see if it's the condition. You might not even get pictures of this. Yeah, we're probably not gonna get pictures of this one. So let me actually look up the pictures on the internet really quick. On this Elkhorn Drive property. We'll get back over here. So right now, guys, I'm doing comps on a property. I'm actually looking at the pictures here. Should see what you got here. So I'm looking at the pictures here from Zillow. I'm just gonna let it pop up here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's 149 a square foot. Let's go back here and look. Also guys, comment below your questions you got. Love to help. So I mean at 149 a square foot here, which I think is too high. It's saying 223. Honestly. Right here is a 4-2 at 1882. Now I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time doing this, so. Eighteen twenty-two. I came at ninety-three a square foot. Let's see what C is. It's pretty decent, but not. A, I need a three-two comp. Four-two. So I would say it's probably be the closest one right here. About 103 a square foot. I would say really quick numbers, 155. The air of 154. And I, I got to verify the numbers and look at all this, but um, that's probably what I'd be doing. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Thanks, guys. What's up? Love it for the people, by the people. That's what it's all about. Let's see. Yes, I could definitely use that. Awesome. How do you get a key for a property wholesaling virtually? So there's a lot of ways you can actually do that. My personal opinion, huh, to get a key, I would say get it mailed to you. You can also have the actual seller put a lockbox on there for you. Most likely what, what you want to do is put a key under like the mat or something. Have someone like a boots on the ground, run up, get a lockbox, put it on there. So you can bring your cash buyers through that virtually. A little more work, but again, you're virtually wholesaling. So not the really, not really the biggest deal in the world. So I would say that's my favorite way to do it. And then obviously you can have the cash buyer. If you can't get a key, just walk the cash buyer. I mean, have the seller walk the cash buyer through if you really know the cash buyer really well and they won't screw you out of the deal. That's probably what I'd be doing. You just got to be pretty careful, I would say. Hey, Zach, Sunday stream. Nice. Thanks. I appreciate it. Loving the Sunday stream. I, I appreciate it. Uh, maybe it's something I could try, like a Q&A on Sundays. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Um, this is definitely something I'm testing out. Definitely not the average thing we do on a Sunday here. We always release a video. So definitely something that's pretty interesting. So we'll see what we got. 
Wait until you get a good cash buyer and get them on a contract. That's interesting. So I rather get the deal. Again, I think I talked about the actual trick with the bandit sign. So with the actual bandit sign, you can actually get a white bandit sign, put something there like, I don't even know. Like like if it's a 2-2, two -two, like a 3-2, I would just do like 3-2 uh, cash for house or you know 3-2 for sale, cash only, must sell quick. And then put it there if you got a 3-2 under contract and then start harvesting those numbers. Make sure you got the phone number on the, on the bottom there and you should be able to do pretty well. When cold calling, do you close on the first call or do you set an appointment and close on the second call? Cold calling, the original call, you get the information, you qualify them, you go on the next one, you keep calling. Uh, if it's a really, really hot lead, I would call them multiple times, even if it's in the same day. And that's probably what I do before you go on the appointment. But uh, I close, I like to do physical wholesaling. So I like to call once and then twice at the appointment. Virtual, call once and then close on the second. And make sure they're ready for the closing. Make sure you like set them up. Like, hey, what I want to get going on this call is talk. If it's something we can do, maybe get an agreement together today. That's probably what I'm thinking more or less, but uh, let me know. Hey, Zach, what should you do immediately after signing with the seller? Do you send the contract to title immediately or should you wait until, the, until you sign the contract with the buyer? Great question here. I personally recommend that you bring it to title first. Make sure you get your earnest money in, even if it's 10 bucks to $100. Make sure you get that in because you don't want your deal stolen. I'm telling you, I've gotten people trying to steal my wholesaling deals. It's the most annoying thing ever. And it oh, makes my blood boil. Seriously. So I would say contract and then title company with the earnest money. And then make sure the title company is actually calling the seller. So the seller feels comfortable and you're using a legitimate title company. That's more or less what we're finding. So that's probably what I would say. But a great question, Kenya. Uh, keep them up. So many people are missing this. I know. I I feel like the secret is the secret's out on how much information we're giving here on this YouTube channel, and then in general for all of the stuff we do. Uh, but not really because we're one of the fastest growing, and we get more views for wholesaling than a lot of gurus out there. So the secret's not out. Uh, but or it's not like people are missing it. I I, I it will take time. But I think I'll change a lot more lives and we'll put a lot of these gurus out of business. That's kind of the goal here. So that, that's sort of what we're doing right here. Hey, Zach, I'm using Bass Driven for drawing for dollars. Does virtually wholesaling real estate work? Yes, I mean, virtual drawing for dollars. Virtual drawing for dollars works. I would get a VA to do it for you, not you. That time is best spent with the VA looking at it. So I would say if you get a VA, it is 100% worth it. That's driven. You drawing for dollars is way worth it, but use a VA for virtual drawing for dollars. It's a very manual task. That's probably why it's best for a VA. And that's my personal opinion, uh, but I've seen from virtual drawing for dollars, the best operations always have VAs doing it and it, it, it's the best. Is there a compromise for boots on the ground? A compromise. Hmm. The best compromise is to maybe have a partner do it or maybe even your cash buyer if you trust them enough. Sometimes you get a realtor, a notary. I would say that. Um, are you asking what company? There's a BPO agent website out there that's really good. Uh, that's probably what I'd be using too. Realtors, notaries are actually my one of the best and easiest ways to do it. Or go to Craigslist and have someone just take pictures of photos for you that can't steal your deal. So that's probably what I'd be do, doing too. The four, like the, the jobs in your county, there's a big jobs for your county, like Facebook group. That's something else I would be doing too, because they're really, really good at finding like a boots on the ground type person on there. How do I market land without cash buyers screwing me? Go to www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. Again, that is www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. Let me write this in. This is it. www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. That will help make sure you don't get screwed. So 
Your question here is how do I market land without a cash buyer screwing me? Great question. The way to actually do this, I get in trouble here, but is uh, trust. Like uh, I would say you need trust, but you can't trust anyone. Trust, but verify. So you're not going to stop a cash buyer from trying to screw you. Cash buyers are always going to try to screw you. It's just the name of the game. Now, with you knowing this information, what are you going to do? Personally, mm, I would say you just got to know you're getting screwed. That's it. Like, that's what I'd say. If you go to www.flipthrick.com slash contract, that assignment of contract, if you get it locked up with the seller, will stop you from getting like screwed on that deal. That's probably what I would say. Just go to www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. That assignment of contract will protect you the most from getting your wholesaling deal. Like, it, You're not going to stop someone from trying to screw you on a deal or try to steal a deal. But if you get a contract, you get an actual earnest money deposit on that, use a legitimate title company, and then you actually use my assignment of contract, it will stop so many people from trying to steal your wholesaling deals and it should deter it. So that's probably what I would do. Just make sure you have a really good trusted cash buyer and there's going to be ones to try to screw you. It's just how some cash buyers are. I'm not, I'm, I don't like it, but that's the truth. And also for land, remember that you all, you do want the cash buyer beforehand. So you want to make sure that they're trusting enough for you. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. How to figure offer price and what is estimated price on PropStream. So my offer is, I do, I do the method. So my method is very weird. So, but it's the one that works and a lot of people are doing it because the MAO formula right now is just not working, especially in real estate wholesaling. So my method's very different. So let's say the property ARV is 100K, okay? The after repair value is $100,000. Now, if it's a $100,000 ARV, what I would do is I would minus off the repairs. So let's say it needs 25K in repairs. That's ARV minus repairs is $75,000. Now, you need to do this calculation on your own. This is different than the 70% rule or something like that because right now, properties are just selling too much like hotcakes. Like in my market here in Florida, cash buyers are not... Like they want more, they want less than a 30% 30 discount. What do I mean by that? That means if it's a hundred thousand dollar price, they want 70% of that. So that would be the, that rule. So they'd want to, they'd buy it at 70 K and that's not the truth anymore. Cash buyers, like the market's so hot that they're actually willing to pay more. So you want let you can even get less of a discount. So my market, my cash buyers are paying 10 to 15% off the actual market value off of it. Because it's so hard to find a good deal here because everyone's bidding everyone up, especially in Florida, because everyone's coming from California, New York. So it's actually changing the way that I'm wholesaling my real estate. So you got 75K here. So remember, guys, $100,000 minus $25,000 in repairs. So we're at $75,000. And then I'm at 15% because I have really good cash buyers. You're probably closer to 20, not 30. Let me know what market you're in. And I can actually look at it, try to help you as much as I can. So that's about 15,000 off of that. So 75,000 multiplied by 0.8, which is 100% minus the 20%, you're at 60K. So $60,000 with a cash buyer will pay for this property. So we do the comps in the ARV with listrei.com. That's what I do do. So that's probably what I would say. But currently right now, at $60,000, you know, when you're talking to a seller that your cash buyer will pay $60,000 for it, which is awesome, right? That's great. It's what we want. Now, we know at 60K, we want to make at least a couple grand on a wholesale deal. I like to make 10, 15, 20K, but at 60K, it's a low price point, so it's harder. Let's say you just want to make 10 off of it. Then you know you're negotiating with the seller that you need to get this thing under contract for $50,000 which pretty good, right? So at $50,000 is what the cap is what we want to get on a contract for. So I'm going to offer like 30K. See what happens. Uh, make sure you get it pretty good. You could offer 40 and they're at like 50. We meet in the middle and we get at 45. 
So at 45 minus the 60, make 15. So it's $15,000, boom. That's awesome, right? So that's the average, especially in that price point, like wholesale fee wise. So it's pretty good. I don't think you can go wrong doing that. I think it's one of the best ones out there. Uh, so that's what I would say. So zip and address kind of thing. Hmm. Yes, I think if you do, you know, have a piece of land in this zip code, it should do really well, but you want to get trusted. So most of the time for land, we actually have the cash buyer lined up before we even get the contract. Opposite of wholesaling real estate or actual single family properties where we usually get the deal and then we find the cash buyer. Uh, we build the cash buyers first. We do the reverse wholesaling where we find the cash buyer for the land and then we get on a contract, do the marketing for the motivated seller. That gives us the best chance uh, possible to get a deal. Let me get some water really quick. I'm, I'll be chugging water all day, guys. So gives me uh, helps my voice clear out, and I can help you guys just go forever on this stuff. So thank you. I will def go there and have trusted buyers. Fingers crossed. Awesome. But yeah, I think trusted buyers are really important. And if you find people that are actually buying land from other wholesalers, it will help you out a lot. I, I promise you guys. Like in wholesaling real estate, trust is everything. And the cool part about real estate is if you screw a wholesaler out, that wholesaler will tell everyone how bad that cash buyer is. So if you're in a really small network, especially like most cities, there's still not a lot of wholesalers out there. So relative to like the population. So I, I would say if you have a bad cash buyer, make sure they're reputable, see how much land they've bought in the past. That's why I personally recommend you go and your cash buyers for land when you seek them out. They should be people that have already bought land before. So if you go to listrei.com, L-I-S-T-R-E-I.com, from there, you guys should go to cash sales of vacant land and then go after those people for your cash buyers because they already have a proven track record of buying land for cash. And they're most likely will do it again and not try to screw you because they want more discounted land. So that will probably keep you the most protected. Now, if you go after like a 20-year-old kid that says they'll buy land and you just assign it to them and they try to JV it and screw you, that's your fault. You need to do the verification. How many properties and how much land have you bought in the past 12 months? Look it up. It all should be public information. Have you worked with wholesalers before? They have. Great. Talk to those wholesalers that they've wholesaled with and say, hey, that cash buyer was good. Was it a good transaction? Do you try to screw you? No. Perfect. There shouldn't be any excuse for a cash buyer screwing you out of a land deal if you do all the vetting and important processes of actually learning what to do. That would probably be my personal recommendation there. We are on Zach. Sweet. Uh, you're not on here. So I don't think you click the link. I'll put the link back on here. Go on YouTube on the streamer thing right here. Pop it up. Let's see what we got here. Where can I find a good detailed job description to hire an acquisitions manager? I would just go in like the wholesaling, like Facebook groups and see what the ad copy they're doing there. Search acquisitions manager, real estate investment company. And that's probably what I do. Make it very general because they have to sort of understand what you do and you don't want to push people off the bat. But I would say always, there's always a hundred K plus earning to earning potential. So that stuff is something I do say all the time. So that's probably closer to what I'd be at. So always, you know, there's always a hundred thousand dollar like potential of earning for there that you can do pretty well with. You know, it's a real estate investment company uh, looking to grow. We have a lot of leads, can work with it. Make sure that an acquisitions manager understands that they are actually going to be in a sales role. So it's not going to be this like crazy like Wolf of Wall Street or like this tech thing where you're doing real estate analysis and like you're behind a computer, uh, like what is it, Nero and the matrix, like you're behind the computer and you're doing all this crazy, like, no, you're actually going to be talking to people. You're going to be a sales role. You have to be an, not have to be, but if you're a people person and like talking to people and understanding it, learning the stories, it'll help you a lot better. 
and they'll probably get the most success there. That's sort of what I'm thinking here, uh, but that's what I'm thinking. We are on, if you're on, you should, I should see on the bottom here. So I don't think you went on, but the uh, things on, thing is down there if you want to go on there. Jason, what is up? What kind of market value do you feel Columbus, Indiana would be? It's about 30 miles south of Indianapolis. Hmm. Uh, we can do some analysis on listri.com. So let me pop it up. That's probably how, that's how I do my market analysis. So let's see here. I mean, it's still dependent on the comps, I would say, but the, the comps are very, very important for it. So So is it Columbus, Indiana? All right. Let me share my screen here. So I think you guys can see my screen here. So I'm on listeria.com right now. So what I'll do here is you know some, like it depends on where you actually want to do the analysis here, but it's looking like statistically they're about 131 a square foot. Average days on markets actually cl climbs pretty far from four to five, but um, that's days on the market. I mean, that's some statistics. We can pop more up for you. But I mean, the market trend, that's what they're saying. Average list is 319, 121 a square foot. Is that right? See, that says 131 for May. So it's definitely pushing hard, definitely above that 121. Uh, but days on markets, 171 seems really high. And the list price and the sales price looks a little different here. Yeah. Okay. So inventory, obviously. So days in the market change, but I guess 300. So you definitely want to be below that. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. Oops. So we can do heat map, MLS status, price growth, do all this stuff. So I mean, we get honestly get as fancy as you want. Seems like an interesting market though. Let's see where the price growth is. So it seems like in your market here. Price growth is kind of everywhere. I'm trying to see if there's like a bad area or a good area here. So these are the pressed areas and these are the nicer ones over here. So 
that's kind of the analysis I would give. I'd probably be below 250 uh, if I would probably look there for wholesaling. But yeah. Hello? Hello? Hey man, can you hear me? All right, bet. I don't know. You guys can hop on the stream and like talk to me if you want. If you're going to do that, I'm probably not going to let you back on. But uh, yeah, that's funny. I hope you guys enjoyed the show there. Uh, what's the best list most likely to deal from cold calling? Probates would be statistically the best chance of getting a deal, I would say. But hold on. Hello? Hey, man, can you hear me? What's up? Hey. I have a question. Um, yeah, man. What's your name? What should I focus on to get my first deal? Yeah, what's your name, man? My name is Ibrahim. I should tell you. All right. Nice to meet you. Um, you too. So, what you should do, what, where do you live? What market? Um, I really don't know. I just, just study it. Just okay. Do you know what city you live in? So what? Like what city are you in? What state? A uh, city. All right, he hopped off again, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, what's the best list most likely to get a deal from cold calling? So, code violations I really like. They're good for. They're good for that. Personally, mm, I would avoid credit card debt list. Water shut off is no, I wouldn't do water shut off right now. Uh, so yeah, I would say code violations, vacants right now, and then high equity if you have a large volume, and then drawing for dollars. The the most best likely list to get a deal is drawing for dollars still. Hello. Hello. Hey, so what what city are you in? What city? City. Uh, I'm in Farmville. Tennessee. All right, Tennessee. Okay, that's a great market. Okay, so um, you should focus honestly on watching as much content as you can about wholesaling. And I think once you get a good grasp of the whole process. Um, I think you should start working on getting a list and calling that list with like a Google voice number. That would be my number one recommendation. Okay. So uh, do you have any other questions? I mean, that's probably what I do. I mean, it seems easy, but it, there's a lot of processes you got to get through there, but really you should just be absorbing as much free content as you can. And I, I think it will help you build that knowledge of what you need to do. And then when you're ready to go and get an idea, I, I think you'll have all the tools you need to make your first uh, couple grand or first 10,000 wholesaling. Okay. Sweet, man. Do you have any, uh, any other questions? No. All right. No problem, man. Um, you can also direct message me on Instagram or Facebook. I'd love to talk to you and see if there's anything else I can do to help you out. All right. Sweet. Lucan says, how do you know what the ARV is? Do you ask the seller what's wrong with the house and estimate how much money it will cost to fix? Hmm. How do you know what the ARV is? I usually look at comps. That's how I'm finding it. Yeah, no, I actually go to the property and see how much uh, like repairs that kind of be needed done for it. So... Yes, that's it. 
Keen Hawk says quickest method to obtain boots on the ground. Personally, I, I would tell you right now, Facebook. Go to a Facebook group or Craigslist. Craigslist still a little, a little still more shady. So uh, boots on the ground right now, I would probably say still uh, Facebook. Which would you recommend to pull a pull list, prop stream or batch leads? I would prefer prop stream right now. Uh, batch leads is great. I've just been using prop stream for so long and they come with a drawing for dollars up. So that's what I'd say. I still use all my SMS, my skip tracing and my actual dialer all through batch. So batch is amazing. Uh, I'm still pulling from prop stream because I just, I like their data and we run a seven figure operation and I'm not here to switch ships like that um, when it comes to the data, which is the most important part, part of the operation. Hello? Ahmed? What's up, Zach? Hey, am I saying that right? Yeah, it's Ahmad. Ahmad? How are you? Yeah, Ahmad. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing, man. I'm doing great, man. I'm blessed. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. What's up? What's up? Doing great. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm trying to get this deal uh under contract. It would be my first deal, but uh, All right. the Let's lady she's she's being like uh, I don't know. She's being kind of difficult. Um, okay. so she's I mean she's a distressed owner. She's trying to get rid of it because she's uh she's moving to Florida. Uh, I'm in Atlanta right now, but uh, she's asking for way too much. And I went back there today and she was like, okay, send me, send me your, your new deal or your new offer. And, uh, I'll see how it goes. Is there a way I can share my screen so I can show you? Um, I don't think so. No. If you want to direct message me in like screenshot or something. Um, uh, I mean, I just want to show you like the, the prop stream. Um, uh, just give me the stats. I don't think you can share on this. Okay, so it's uh it's in Atlanta. Um uh, so on Prostream is saying the Where's estimated Elena? value is like Atlanta, where in Atlanta? Elena? Al Atlanta, Georgia. Oh oh okay. Yeah. Uh, so its estimated worth is like two forty two K. Okay. And uh, initially we got it under contract for two two twenty five. And uh, I think you'll need around like 30 30 40 K in repairs so uh, I tried putting it out on Craigslist and Facebook uh, I haven't had any uh, any uh, feedback from any cash buyers um, I don't know if, I don't know if it's if it's if it's high if I got it too high uh, yeah. but uh, I don't know near it there's like this neighborhood like houses like in the 300s and up 400s and up um uh, but i don't know what the arv would be okay so you said like 240 and is like the arv what is the repairs on it i mean repairs it would be uh like the whole kitchen would need to be redone um uh, flooring in the living room and a uh, hallway Actually, not the hallway. Uh, and the bathroom, it needs all new doors uh, all over the house. Um, and then it needs some, like, touch-up. I mean, the roof is new, but it needs some touch-up in the, like, roof on the sides. Um, and then uh, what else? Uh, the wall in the living room. Like, the whole wall is, like, it just needs to be, like, updated kind of. Um, but that, that's that's basically it. Okay. So, and then a little bit, a little bit of the driveway, like it needs to be leveled. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just doing some quick math here. Right? You, you definitely need a better price on this, man. Yeah. Um, so 240. I mean, I'm just gonna do my math. I'm guessing it needs 25 to 30. Just yeah. From what you're saying, let's say 25. And then you're gonna have to at least sell this for at least 20% discount. Yeah. So multiply that by 80%. You're at 172 is what a cash buyer is going to pay it for. Most mm -hmm. likely. Okay. So she just wants too much. Yeah. Is there, 
have you asked her why she doesn't list it with a realtor? Uh, she has. That's how I found it. I found it through failed listing. Um, but I guess she didn't. She didn't want to pay the the fees, realtor fees, and and whatnot. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, she well, wants to sell it. She's had. Uh, I mean, I've had conversations with her. She's a nice lady, but uh, she's uh, she's had like bad uh, bad experience with tenants. And she's she actually had uh, tenants. Her last tenants they were like stalking her through her phone, camera, computer. But um, which is crazy. But yeah, I mean, okay. she she wants to sell it. She wants to get rid of it. Cause she's moving to Florida. So okay, what was the property listed for? It was listed for two fifty. <laughs> contract for. <laughs> 225 yeah that's not enough at discount yeah i mean yeah. yeah i mean i already told her like uh because I, I sent her a termination contract because i was like no this price isn't gonna work for us uh because i had a 10-day uh walkthrough yeah uh whatever and then um and then i told her yeah it needs it needs all this and my calculated uh repair estimate is like uh 40 50 to get it up to date and everything um, so I can make profit. And then uh, she was like, okay, the lowest, I mean, I won't go below like two, 220, she said, after after getting it under contract for 225. Yeah, I, that's not a deal. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Just, I, just walk away from it. I would make sure, yeah. I mean, if you have earnest money, go get it and then make sure no, you have written notice. She to wanted she wanted 3k earnest money <laughs> and i didn't even have any she wanted 3k earnest money and i told and then like under my contract like i didn't mention anything about earnest money so i don't yeah. know she was like you did the right thing there yeah. um yeah i, have you, I guess go ahead. go ahead no no you go ahead did you ask any of your cash buyers like what did they say when you try to sell it to them I haven't called the ones that I have on my list. Um, I was going to get to that today, but I haven't gotten to it. Um, okay. But no one no one has reached out to me from Craigslist and Facebook where I put it. Um, Weird. You should get maybe, a lot. Maybe I, put it, maybe I put it way too high. Did you do Facebook? I did Facebook, yeah. I did uh, Facebook groups. Did you do Facebook Marketplace? Fa no, not Facebook, no. Go do it. Facebook Marketplace. Yep. You'll get what, do you think, what do you think I should list it for? It, it doesn't matter. You're just trying to find cash buyers at this point. Yeah. It's not going to be a deal. Yeah. I'd use that as trade bait right now. Why is technically having a contract for finding a cash buyer? Yeah. Okay. And just give me a direct, honestly, just once you get on a, out of contract, <clears throat> ask the cash buyer what price they'll pay for that house. And you'll probably be closer to that 170. Just so you can confirm. Okay. All right, man. Appreciate it, Zach. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Hey, quick question. Yeah. Did you ever make it a state in wrestling? For states? Yeah. You made it states, right? Or no? I stopped my... No, not for states. Because my senior year, I had three state places in my region. Wow. So it was way too hard. Three state placers, one state no. champ, and then two other state placers, all in my region. Wow. So, a little too hard for me. Yeah, I break it. I was a match away my junior year. Dude, uh, I didn't wrestle my senior year because uh, I wanted to take a break. I didn't want to, um, you know, focus on wrestling. But junior year, I had an easy bracket in states, but I missed the bus, and I missed it. I missed it, man. <laughs> That's it. I was whole I, I literally did not care about wrestling my senior year. Yeah. It was my fault. I was making so much money. I did I, I, I stop caring. Yeah. That was pretty good, even though I stopped caring. So yeah, man. Yeah. That's that's a good question. I like it. All right, man, Zach. Stay safe. You too, man. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. All righty. <laughs> that was a great question. I know some property they don't show mortgage information and such. I assume it's county re regulated. Yeah, so it's 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 county to county because I can actually see it for my Florida stuff. 
Zach, I'm trying to find who owns a property where the owner and the wife passed away. Kids say, don't know. Perhaps she was shown or passed as a homeowner. Go to the property appraiser and then look at the clerk of the court and go to public records and search the names and see who's on the deed. Thanks, Jason. If I was ever on the market to find the agent and call the, if I was ever, yes. Hi, Jason. I'm from Indianapolis, but now in, not that different from hometown. Sweet. What's your opinion on trying to wholesale? In this current market, I would say no. In a different market, yes. Prices are just way too high. That's what I'm telling you right now. So I would probably be less interested on that side. It's just harder. Like, it, it, like price, people are just buying so crazy on the MLS. It's a lot harder to wholesale on the MLS. Now, when the market's bad, you can definitely do it. And in this YouTube channel, I'll show you actually how to do it. So don't worry. I'm in an attorney state. How much more difficult is it to deal with an attorney than a title company? Also, are attorneys more expensive? Yes. But it's not that much more difficult. If you got a deal, you should still be able to get it done through. Like in New York, people are still getting forty, fifty thousand dollars deals. They got to go through attorneys, but they still make it, still make deals. So it's kind of dependent. It's like, have you had good luck getting deals from code? Yes. I've gotten so many deals from code violations. It's crazy. So we've done little five to $10,000 ones. I'll show you in the channel from code violations. And then like 30, $40,000 from code violations. They're, they're amazing. Cut to today, corner lot, high grass, Fisbo, hot part of town, asking for 30 said he had offers of other investors offered him 20%. Hmm. Offered him 20% off of that or like were investors offering him 87 grand, which I doubt it. Or were they offering him like 348? Let me know. Eight figure wholesalers. There's guys who do eight figures in wholesale fees, but their profits are not eight figures. I promise you. Yo, Zach, I have about eight land deals. I need help in Jersey city. My cold caller really built me a pipeline out there pretty quick. Sweet. Uh, if you need help selling them, I would start cold calling cash sales. What's the question you need help with J uh, JJ? Let me know. That's sweet though. High equity vacants right now for our direct mail has been one of our like best. No, I have not. Have you purchased pro any properties with require that with repaired sinkholes? No, I'm in Florida. I should know that, but we have not. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Hey Zach, do you think it's good to see a idea to sign up for batch leads for texting since you already have batch dialer and prop stream? Also, do you send letters and postcards to batch leads? So. Great question there, Gene. You need to test out SMS in your market before you do it. So I would go to smszack.com, get 500 texts for $1, test out 500 texts and see how it's working in your market and then make a decision from there. That's what I recommend. 500 texts for a dollar, which is below what the actual cost. They lose money when they do it. smszack.com, smszack.com. Let me pop it up too. I promote that thing like crazy because they literally it's the best deal out there. So you literally it's a free trial for texting. Pretty cool. Try it out. See if it works or not. If it doesn't, then don't do it. If it does, then do it. That's probably what I would say. Do you send letters and postcards? No, I actually use the offer postcard. That's what we do. We actually send offers on our postcards because we double the response rate. And then from there, we just use our acquisitions people to build that rapport, meet with them get off that price onto an, a lower price usually because of the repairs. And then from there, we able to almost double our deals. So we use the offerpostcard.com, offerpostcard.com, what we use. Hey, I'm recently, hey, I'm recently got a motivated seller in Florida is the current formula 7080. Let me know what market. You're probably closer to 80 if you're in Florida, but it depends. So if you're in like Matt Dora, it would be different than Orlando. 
Or if you're in Miami, it'd be different than Port St. Lucie. So it really depends. Zach, can you do an intro conversion role play for sub two pre foreclosure? Yeah. I mean, it's really just talking to them and ask them what other wholesalers have offered them for the property. From there, when you're actually talking to them, have a conversation and just say, oh, okay, looks like there's not enough equity in this. I mean, what there's a, like paint the picture for them and ask them, what it feel like if you could just get rid of this property and you got some money? Well, you probably, there's a way we can do it. You're open to it. I get paid. What? I, I have no equity though. Well, why don't you list the property? I can't list the property. Okay. Cause you don't have enough equity. Why don't you sell to one of those wholesalers? Oh, they, they, they want too much money. Or, I mean, they want too much of a discount and you won't make any money. Well, what if you took payments with me? And you explain the payments, explain the subject to process. Don't say subject to, and just basically say, you'll give them like a couple grand here. And then you'll take over the payments for them. Works every time. Not that complicated for the sub two conversion. Like you, you they have to be very open to it. You, you can't force a sale. 380K and 87K, both. That's crazy. Uh, 87K is just stupid. Uh, 380K. So I would build a report and try to get a contract and see what cash buyers are willing to pay. That's probably what I do. If you have a low capital and the seller went to high EMD, what should you say to negotiate lower? We don't do a big earnest money, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. What we do is we just buy it all cash. So our earnest money will be within a month. It's a lot faster than the average on market. So we don't do the average earnest money because we buy it so quickly because all of our money is being tied up on deals. So we'll, on that date, we can agree to a commitment for all the money. That's it. I mean, do you know wholesalers who make eight figures a year? Sorry. I know wholesalers that claim to make eight figures a year, but they're still trying to sell you a $4,000 course. Do they really have enough money for it? I don't know. I think they're saying that just to try to sell coaching. Yeah, I have to agree with you with the current state of the market. Even with the lumber crisis, sellers I've dealt with are selling their house for 2x market value because lumber is so high. So yes, I'd be getting higher. You don't have to get as much lower discounts, but you still got to get deals. Hey, what's up from Houston? I'm having trouble with VAs being poached by other wholesalers. Do you have any idea on how to keep your VA from selling your leads? you can't stop it. You're just going to have to find a good VA and keep them. Like I would say if you're in a unique market, it's good, but you want to hire VAs that have a long track records at companies. I worked with this guy for four or five years and I'm sick of doing Excel work. That's probably what I do with like a cold caller acquisitions person. Make sure you get someone who doesn't do wholesaler deals with a lot of wholesalers. If you have a VA that just goes through wholesalers, they're probably going to steal your data. If you have a VA that does cold calling for like a like a credit like repair company or like a loan shark, they're probably not going to steal your data. So that's kind of where we're going off of here. Citrus County, I'm in Memphis, just above Tampa. Yeah, you're probably closer to 7580. Zach, when does PropStream refresh these leads typically? I'm in Houston. It seems like every lead has been contacted a thousand times already. I, I mean, the refresh rate, depending. So if someone's on a vacant, it's probably not going to change for a full year. So that's kind of the difference I've been seeing. Um, the probate, the pre probate should be refreshed almost daily. And I would say, let me think here. High equity should be monthly, I would say, because that's when equity changes really because you do another like payment. So I would say monthly most likely. And high equity doesn't change that much. Like you just, the payments change. You're going off a percentage. So yeah, it's a formula. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hey, Zach, I'm trying to get started in wholesaling. I'm currently in Miami, but I'm thinking about virtually wholesaling in tech. Amazing market. Miami's tough. I would do it. Go in. 
I would find a boots on the ground or find someone that do drive for dollars and partner up with them, another wholesaler. I would do SMS marketing and I would cold call like crazy there. Cold calling high equity in that market would probably do very well. But that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Great market though. I know a lot of guys doing really, and gals doing really well over there. So that's it guys. So that is today. That is my Sunday live stream, uh, wrapping it up here. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, let me know what you guys like. If you guys want, I can do live streams later so I can start at like seven or eight and then have them go a little further. Uh, let me know what you guys think, but this is the questions gurus don't answer. And I think I did a pretty good job there. So make sure you guys go to wholesaling houses for real. Make sure you guys go to offerpostcard.com if you're interested in direct mail. Uh, that is my free ad copy I give out uh, in the algorithm that we got there. We just give offers on postcards. Uh, that's the one we use because I've gotten too many messages on what, what my ad copy looks like. So I just give it out for free. Um, but that's it, guys. Uh, Tuesday, we'll have another live stream. I'll probably be cold calling live. Uh, that'll be a really fun one. And Wednesday, we got a podcast. Thursday, we're doing another awesome live. And then obviously Friday, we have more lives. Monday, we have a really cool video uh, with Rick. Uh, so it'll be a really exciting one. So he's going to talk about stopping foreclosure with your sellers, helping people out. So that's the goal here. That's why we get into real estate wholesaling to help people out. So I really appreciate you guys. Got any value of this? Remember, smash that like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And also, again, thank you guys so much just for the support here on this channel. It means everything to me. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. Stay blessed. 